Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Renee. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Thursday morning. Uh, uh, manna. We pray and get everybody ready. Press like and share. We're going to talk about three things this morning. I'm condensing, trying to get you everything. We're going to talk about the goodness of God, the grace of God, and the mercy of God. Amen. So the goodness of God is God's providential care for all these creatures. That one of the things about the goodness of God, he cares for us. You understand? Now, now, when you look at the God's goodness and his mercy, nothing that we see for a hundred thousand years, um, God created sustenance for us. God, God did not leave us hungry without everything that we creating on this earth, right? It is a source of what God has left and what God has produced you know, giving us creativity to take care of ourselves and do the things we need to do. So God takes care of his creatures. God takes care of us. And, you know, a lot of times we think, oh, it's my job that takes care of me. It's me that take care of me. It's me. So now on this um, technological um, advanced age that we live in, we seem to think we God. We seem to think that we are the source and we are the strength that people don't even believe in God to take care of them. People don't even believe mm -hmm. for God to provide and take care of them because the technological age that we live in. But back in the old days, people understood that everything we have from the grains mm -hmm. to eating food and the animals, everything came from God. So now we don't even think about the goodness of God. Um, people start to think of my success, my will, my this, my that. I have my stuff, my this. And you don't even know that God is the one to provide for you. You know, this is why Matthew 6, uh, uh, 33 is important. That we don't even seek the kingdom for anything anymore. Because we feel like we don't need to seek the kingdom. Because we take care of our own self. And I'm the power that takes care of me. Mm -hmm. But some of us still believe that the goodness of God is God providential. Now let me tell you something. If God takes his breath from you, what you have? Nothing. So all the money you have, all the house you have, all the stuff you have, I, I believe in God to take care of me. He is my source and he is my strength and he is my everything. I don't depend on men to take care of me because let me tell you something. You right now working on that job, that man and that boss can say, I'm firing you today. That company can say, I'm firing you today. Then where's your resources coming? Then what you going to have? See, this is why for all of those who believe you on this time and on these days, you need to put your, your, your entire mind and heart on knowing that God is the one that yes. provides for you and take care of you. Yes. Amen? Yes. So uh, Psalm 145, right? Verse 9. Start there. Now, verse 9, what does it say? The Lord is good to all. That's what it says. Now, it didn't say I'm good to um, only my people. Mm -hmm. You see? Um, he don't want to say, I, I, I'm good to all I, I, I care about. No, the Lord is good to all. Even if you're wicked, if you, you know, even if you're an atheist and you say, I don't believe God, I don't believe in an atheist. Because if you, if you say, I don't believe in God, then you, you, you acknowledge that God exists. You just don't believe in him. So, so, so you believe in a God. So, um, there's no such thing as an atheist because you believe in something. You, you believe he don't exist. So, you know. So even he's good to all, even those who don't like him, who don't worship, mm -hmm. those who don't pray to him, and those who don't seek him. And his tender mercies are what? Are over all his works. Now, he says, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy sing shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion unto it to all generation. The Lord upholded all that fall, right? Upholded all that fall, and raised up all those that be bowed down. Thy eye of all wait upon thee, right? And thou givest them what? Their meat in due season. Who give you your meat in due season? God Amen. give you your meat in due season. Amen. God give you everything. Look at this. Thou openest thy hand. You see that, right? He opened his hand. And satisfy the desire of every, of every living thing. Well, I want to say this, right? There's, there, there is a mindset of the devil that feels like there's too much people on this planet. 
and it is our job to kill some people also so the rest of us can survive. Because these people don't understand that if God allowed people to live, God also is the one that provides. Yes. See, when men become the provision, mm. then you can try to act like God. And that's the yeah. danger of you becoming um, uh, uh, the source because you decide who live and who die, who have and who don't have. You understand the monopolies and all these things. But God, for those of us who believe that God is the strength and God is the one that provides and God is the one that cares for and God is the one that takes care of us. Let's look at Job um, 38, um, 41. Whatever we have is from God. Whatever we have, whatever we possess, our health. Now look at this. Who, who provided for the raven his food? When his young ones cry unto God, they wonder for lack of me. Who does it? Is there a chef that go up the mm. tree? And, and, and do, do the raven has a restaurant to go eat in? Do the raven have a supermarket to go get food for the children? Every day these creatures, every day they go and wait upon God to provide some substance for them to feed their children and to feed themselves. This is what the Bible said, that if God so much take care of the birds of the air, how much should he not take care of you? Yeah. We are the only one who feels like um, we, we, don't need, we don't depend on God anymore. And this is why we have so much lack. But God, we depend on you this morning. I depend on you this morning, God. I give you the praise. So we have to trust God as being the source, as being the strength, as being the everything of our lives. No matter what the, uh, the nation says, no matter what people are saying, God is the source. Yes. You will not be hungry. You will not be without. You will not be broke. You will not be, uh, 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 um, you, know, you know, in a place of your life you don't have. God will take care of your body. Yes. God will take care of your mind, your soul, your spirit. Yes. God will make sure you have some place to live. God will make sure you have somewhere to eat. God yes. will make sure you're good. When you understand that God is is the source. Hallelujah. Now, for this part, we're going to talk about the grace of God. I told you that we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the grace of God. And what is the grace of God? The grace of God is the undeserved, unearned, and unmerited favor of God bestowed upon sinful men. You know, a lot of times people think that we have a lot of people in the church feel like, oh man, um, you know, let me act a certain way for God to love me so I can get stuff. But you know what? No, 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 no matter how good you can do behavioral changes, it will not make you um, good enough to receive the undeserved mercy of God. I receive it because I, of his goodness. Good. I, I receive it because of his mercy. Because there's a lot of times we don't deserve anything from God. We don't deserve anything at all. Because, you know, sometimes we, you know, it's like we're missing a hit and, you know, sometimes we feel good. That God, I deserve it. But you know what? I never deserve any good. I don't deserve anything. Because the only thing I deserve was hell. The only thing I deserve was to go to hell. But His love, His mercy took me out of hell. Amen. So because of His mercy and His grace, the grace of God provide for me, take care of me. Uh, the grace of God keep me. The grace of God hold me. The, the, the grace of God provide for me. The grace of God gives me mercy when I didn't deserve mercy. The grace of God in the worst days of my life be, make ways out of no ways. When you feel like a dog and you don't feel like God, I, you know you know what, I just wanna crawl under a rock, but his love and his mercy and his goodness, you know, there's a lot of things God gave me. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it, but it was only for his grace. I thank God for his provision. I thank God for his grace, undeserved. Uh, my God, I didn't deserve it. I, I didn't merit it. Um, you did all the wrong things. You said all the wrong things. Yes, you were in the wrong environment. You made so much mistakes of your life. But his grace, but his mercy. Yes. Now, when we look at it, um, look at Ephesians, right? Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2. Let's look at that. Ephesians Chapter 1, verse 2. We're going to go straight to it. 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Grace be unto you. We say that all the time. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and, and people don't understand it. He said, grace be, be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that, right? Mm -hmm. so, so grace, the grace of God, you know, the grace of God be unto us. We, we thank God for his grace. Look at verse 6. He said, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Where and he have made us acceptable in the beloved. So mm. it's his grace that saved me. Yes. It's yes. his grace that provides for me. I didn't deserve mm. to be saved. God didn't pick me because I was better than somebody else. It's his grace. It is his grace. So I thank God for his grace. Look at verse mm. 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of what? His grace. He's a, he's, a, he's a graceful God, my God, full of mercy. Now look at this, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved and have raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness to us uh, Towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. I thank God for his grace. His attributes are graceful God. I didn't deserve it, God. I, I, I didn't deserve. It means that I didn't deserve salvation. And I didn't deserve anything else that come after salvation. Everything else I got is because of his grace and his mercy. Everything else that will come to my life is because God is a good God, yes, yes. and I didn't deserve nothing, and I'm grateful. See, that that gives you a mindset that is grateful. Let's let's look at 2 Thessalonians, right? Um, let's go there. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. 2 Te Thessalonians chapter 3, right? Verse 17. Glory. Praise God. Look, look what it says here. Um, now, um, 17... To 18, I believe. The the salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is the token of every epistle, so I write, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we see that Paul, who was killing Christians, destroying Christians, mm -hmm. matter of fact, he was taking them out of the homes and taking them out of places mm -hmm. and having them killed. And he understood that God, you know, was chosen him. Even from while he, while he was killing people, God chose him to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And he understood the grace of God. He understood he deserved death for killing God's people. Mm -hmm. But he understood he had to learn that God will forgive me. And, and God has forgiven me. And God has used me mightily to do a great work despite Amen. my past. Amen. Despite the things that happened. Amen. It was nothing but the grace of God. It was nothing but his mercy. It was nothing but his goodness. No matter what your life is, the grace of God can turn it around if you seek God and believe that God yes, will Lord. do something in your life. The grace of God, right? Now look at this. The grace of God includes the long-suffering and forbearance of God towards sinful men. Let me tell you, so the grace of God, mm -hmm. this is why God didn't come into this planet yet. I believe if God came 2,000 years ago, none of us would be here. But he has, he has because he's long-suffering, he's silent. His long suffering, given given us time to get it right. Yes, I thank God for His grace, right? The ability for us yes. to get it right, yes, so we can be in the place where we need to be in. God, I thank, you. thank you. I thank you this morning for your grace. Now, for the last one, we're going to talk about the mercy of God, right? Mercy is the pity of God upon the miserable condition because of sin, right? Mercy is what. The pity of God. Mm. Now, you know, how can I explain it? Somebody done wrong. They did you dirty, right? They did you dirty, man. They did you wrong. And then, but you still have a love for them because of what state they're in. Yes. So, so that's mercy, right? Yeah. God, God not looking to punish even though you're wrong, but God is looking to restore. That's his mercy. And we thank God for his mercy because you know what? You know, most of us, including myself, maybe when somebody did you dirty, you want them to die. Let them die right now. That's it. Boom, boom. But nobody want to be like, you know, that's something that God has to develop in your heart. That the people that hurt you, 
the people that did you wrong, the people that talked about you, the people that turned their back on you, that now they're in your state. Can you show them the love they never gave you? Can you show them the mercy they never gave you? Can you show them the, 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 the kindness they never gave you? Yes. So that's what mercy is. Now look at this here, right? That is the mercy, James 5, 11. Let's look at this. James 5, 11. Amen. Amen. James 5. Go there. Praise the Lord. James 5, 11. Go and read. He began to read God's holy word. Now behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patient of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is pitiful, very pitiful, and of tender mercy. Right? So we see that God is not willing, trying to destroy you, looking forward to destroy you because you have done wrong. And we've seen that throughout the ages and throughout the time, and we have seen that in our lives. You know, no matter what they've done, right, as long as they're breathing, as long as they have breath on, on their lungs, we always have to pray, no matter how far people have strayed, mm -hmm. and no matter how wrong they did you, God restored them. Now, it is very important. I, I, I know that when wrong happened to us, our need for vengeance is very strong. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, you know I'm not saying that this is wrong, because when somebody done wrong to you, the first thing you want is revenge. Mm -hmm. But after God done dealt with your heart, mm -hmm. And he's trying to give us his, his ways and his mm -hmm. attribute to be merciful. Because a lot of times we concentrate on our hurt. And we don't understand why the person did what they did. Mm -hmm. And it can be because they're sinful. It can be because they hurt. Because a lot of times when things happen, we don't see the part of other people. We only see our hurts and our pain and what's going on with us. Mm -hmm. But we don't understand their part. But regardless of what happened, we have to develop the heart of God, which is a, a heart of mercy. Mm -hmm. That even in their state, that you say, God, restore them, bring them to the place of peace. If they are away from you, bring them back to you, God. Because, you see, you cannot let go without having mercy. You cannot walk in the fullness of freedom without praying for them. This is why Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Pray for those who, who abuse you. Pray for those who talk. I'm telling you, it's hard. It is not easy. It is an internal quality that comes from the Spirit. It doesn't come from your flesh. But it's something of the Holy Spirit of God inside your soul. God, I pray for them. God, I pray that you restore them. God, I pray that you bless them. God, I pray that you give them the best life they can have. I release them, God. I let them go. See, this is the pitiful mercy. Not to give them the end that you imagine, which is vengeance, but you give my end, which is the mercy of God, which is restoration, if it's their will to come to God and do whatever. Yes, yeah. But vengeance belongs to God and not to you. So you, you, you are able to walk in the mercy of God and walk in peace and walk healed with all men and walk in the peace of God because I no longer have those things. I walk with mercy mm -hmm. in my heart. So no matter what anybody, let me tell you something, people hurt you back then, and people are going to hurt you in the future. Mm -hmm. But always walk with the forgiveness, always walk with the mercy of God, ready to show the attributes, the internal attributes of God, that it is in you to be able to do it. So you have to choose. That's why it's important to read, to have Bible study like that, to have these type of food that you're getting, to know that the attribute of your father is inside of you. You just have to be it. Mm -hmm. Be it, like you said, be it holy. It's in you. It is not an attribute of your flesh. It is an attribute of the new life of God, which is in you, which is the spirit of God. Amen. So I pray the word bless you. Yes. I pray the word strengthen you. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Renee. I have one thing to say to you. Jesus is Lord. God bless you.